There. All right. For the back and higher. Oh, okay. Well, if I'm looking here, I can see it very well. the side even though the top is better because I mean, I'm just getting so much light back. Looking from sort of here is doing quite well. I can see quite a lot. Oh okay. Looking from <laughs> <laughs> looking from the pen angle I can see. Alright. I can see quite a lot. Yeah. Okay. Looks like it's built up fairly well. Yeah. Yeah. That actually looks pretty good. Go on. Is there a way to zoom in on this, or Jack? Do you do you know if there's a way to zoom in on this, or? I have no idea. Okay. I just oh, good. That's all too clear. Good. Yeah, that's very nice. What am I looking for? The cosmic rays. Where am I looking? So if you look down this you'll you will see them settle. Oh, yeah, okay. right there. Like yeah, there's a lot of them. Oh, that was a nice one, yeah. That one? Yeah. Like, just like, that was really good. Oh, that's really good. Well, that was a massive one. I'm sorry, actually. <laughs> Ooh, that was a nice one too. So, so why do some of them move in straight lines, but some of them don't seem to move in straight okay. lines? Okay. So the reason why some move in straight lines and some of them do not move in straight lines is because some of them have more energy than others. Some of them are closer to the initial event. And um, so way high up in the atmosphere, a very energetic particle, more energetic than can be produced by our best particle accelerators, hits an, an atom or a molecule in the air and creates just a shower of particles. Most of them are, are pions, muons, and electrons. Okay. And those pions break up very quickly into muons, and the muons will eventually break up into electrons. But as the muons travel down, they, they also hit other air particles mm -hmm. and ionize them. Yeah. And then the electrons from that ionization event also have a lot of energy, and they continue, and then they ionize, and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. until after about um, 10 or 20 times doing that, uh, you get electrons that don't have very much energy anymore. And when they don't have very much energy, then they just bounce off of all of the air molecules. Their cross-section okay. becomes much, much larger, yeah. and their momentum changes much, much more quickly by mm -hmm. each collision. Okay. And so that's why some of them look straight, and some of them look very, very curvy. Yeah. And some of them, if you pay attention, will seem to split into two, mm -hmm. and that's because they uh, um, had a lot of energy, and um, and I and ionized uh, another e um, air mm -hmm. particle, and uh, the electron from that continues on. <laughs> oh, they were too big, massive ones. Then. And sometimes it'll look like they uh, switch direction, kind of at a almost a 45 degree angle, and that's because uh, it started out as a muon and it changed into an, an electron and a neutrino, and you see the electron being traced out. The neutrino doesn't interact, so the neutrino isn't traced out at all. Yeah. I like that you can see the kind of rippling of the cloud too. That is very neat, I think. It's a nice side effect. Yes. The cloud's much more denser. Than yeah. Much more. It's a better air current. Um, definitely thank Craig for uh, putting the felt on the top because that worked very, very well. This is much better than last time. This is beautiful. Is it possible to fill? 
more of the chamber with cloud, or is it always just going to sit? It is possible, and the way in which you do that is by getting the top warmer, somehow getting more isopropyl alcohol absorbed into the top, so adding more felt, and making the bottom colder. Okay. Those are the three things that you can do. I have an always limitless supply. Of yeah. There's a point in which um, the 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 cloud ceases to be as extended and just becomes thicker at the bottom, and you don't want that. Okay. So. Could you do something like stick a hot water bottle on top? That's what we were planning on doing, and uh, hopefully uh, um, next time, maybe on Saturday, I'll buy a hot water bottle mm -hmm. and we can stick that on the top. It'll definitely help the process. <laughs> that says something. Oh, oh. <laughs> I was thinking it's, it's Swedish is incomprehensible. I've written out. <laughs> this is how I would write mamma probably. M A. That's about how my three year old would write mama, I think. Yeah, so. Yeah, it works. It works. Very nice. Oh, okay. Good. I'm, I think we'll end the video with that wonderful sentiment. <laughs>